WOR New York, 710 on your dial. Now for a transcribed drama of Murder by Experts. Murder by Experts. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Experts with your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, world-famous mystery novelist and author of the recently published bestseller, The Life of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective writers, those experts who are themselves masters of the art of murder and can hold tentatively at its highest. This time, our guest expert is the noted mystery novelist, Lawrence Blockman. From his vast knowledge of the mystery field, Mr. Blockman has chosen a radio classic written by Joseph Rusko. And now we present Miss Marilyn Erskine in The Creeper. It is the hour before dawn, that moment when the huge, sprawling metropolis lies deep in slumber. The streets are empty, save for the milkman making his rounds from one darkened apartment house to another. But look now. There, on the third floor, an apartment is brightly lighted. The occupant is an attractive redhead in her early 20s. She sits curled on a couch, speaking on the telephone as the radio plays softly. <laughs> so I come telling you, Gladys. I'm waiting on my table. Paying no attention to this guy. I can see, of course, that he's giving me the eye, but good. What does he look like? Oh, he was the Gary Cooper type. Oh, lanky and sunburned, bashful, too. Anyway, he's sitting at one of my tables, trying to get up nerve enough to start a conversation. I'm polite, but nothing else. Well, it's 2 a.m., and we're getting ready to close the place when he finally speaks his piece. What did he say, Virginia? What did he say? Oh, that he was from out of town, and this was his first visit to New York, and... Oh. And what? And what, Jenny? Gladys, I think somebody's trying to get into my apartment. What? Here, yeah, the, the doorknob is turning. Oh, it's probably some drunk up the wrong apartment. Oh, he's, he's putting his key in the lock right now. So what? You've got your night lock on, haven't you? No, it's, it's broken. Gladys, I'm scared. There's nothing to worry about. He'll go away when he finds his key won't unlock the door. Gladys, the door is opening. What do you want? You, you got the wrong apartment. Jenny, what is it? Answer me. Get out of here. Get out of here, I'll scream. Jenny. Without batting an eye. Well, let's, let's hear the rest. Interesting. Oh, you. Don't go turning on that radio again, Steve Grant. I've heard enough. I'll go out of my mind, for heaven's sake. Yes. That's a good, solid clue. What is? For heaven's sake. How many men use that? Oh, shut up. 
Okay, Mrs. Grant. Pass the biscuits, my little sister. Pass the biscuits. Eat, eat, eat. Three women in three days murdered in cold blood by a fiend right here in the Heights. I'm too sick to go out. Too scared to stay in. The lock's broken. And he sits there eating. Pass the biscuits, he says. Well, there's nothing wrong with my appetite, Mom. Of course. That's what cost you your job on the police force. You were in a restaurant eating when you should have been answering a call. Well, some men drink to escape. I eat. Escape to What? An ugly tongue, a beautiful face, and a roving eye. In short, a wife. Oh, so you're starting that again. You and your crazy jealousy. Maybe the creeper's way of escaping life isn't drinking or eating. But, uh, strangulation. Who knows? Shut up. Go ahead and get a divorce. Go ahead. Can I help it if men look at me? I don't know why you come home at all. Where do you go? What do you do with yourself? Where were you this morning? Why did you come back? To eat. But someday I'll lose my appetite for that, too. And when I do, honey, there'll be no escape. Now, I'm off again. Kiss. Yeah. Still using stage lipstick, huh? Wipe it off. How many times must I tell you? You're married now, remember? Steve, wait. Yeah? At least go buy me my medicine. Sorry, no time. Don't leave me alone. Stay home today, please. I'm afraid. Oh, don't be silly, Seth. Nothing will happen to you. You have a doorman, an elevator boy, Mrs. Stone across the hall, a phone. Oh, you'll take that. But the night lock, it doesn't work. Well, now you can't lock me out anymore. It doesn't catch. Something's happened to it since last night. Steve. Get a new one. I can't get a lock, Miss. They're all so busy. I've tried all morning. Steve, please. If I want to phone you, where will you be? Out. Goodbye, love. Take care of your cold. Steve Grant. <laughs> Why, if it isn't old Pearly Chase. <laughs> yeah, here you got thrown off the force, Steve. Yeah. You got thrown off the news, Pearly. Yeah, you heard wrong. I wasn't fired. I was just warned. I wasn't fired either. Just suspended. For three days. My trouble is I eat too much. I drink too much. I hear you living up at the Heights, Steve. Yeah. That's funny. Me too. Here you're married now to a gal that's a knockout. That's all the boys with him. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Used to be on the stage, you know. Yeah, I think I knew her. Wasn't a stage name Vicky Duval? That's her. I love that Wainsford. Women. How does a guy handle him? Maybe the creeper has the right method. <laughs> Thank you for taking the words out of my mouth. So who is the creeper, Steve? You got any angle? Well, you tell me and I'll split the reward with you. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, though, and I don't think even the police force will put it together yet. Yeah? In all three cases, just before the creeper struck, the door locks had already been tampered with. You don't say you got a theory? Well, sure. I mean, you take that note on the wall written with lipstick. For heaven's sake, in every case, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Right. Now, what man uses an expression like that? The long and short of it is this. A creeper is a woman. <laughs> a roost. Just like the height of the message from the floor of the roost. Six feet. And yet I'll lay odds the creeper's no more than a guy your height says. Or mine. Five feet nine. Yeah? Well, go on. Let's have the rest, Sherlock. Okay. That business of the three locks that were tampered with. They were tampered with from the inside. I don't get it. The creeper must have gotten into each of the apartments when no one was home and broken the night lock. That made it an easy setup when he came back later to knock off his victim. Well, how, well, how could he have gotten in to begin with? Those were solid locks. A pick lock would open them. You mean the creeper's a burglar? Maybe. Oh, no. Oh, nuts, you and your theory. Yeah? How do I know where the creeper's going to strike next? You do? Certainly. 
that he does not smile. <laughs> He's just crazy. You play along crazy. Think the way he does. And you're one jump ahead of him. That's the trouble with the police, no imagination. How can you expect logical clues from a madman? <laughs> play along crazy, Steve. Make God you're the creeper. That's your compulsion. Go ahead, let's see. All right. First. The victims are all redheads, every one. You notice that, of course. Three redheads in three days. Oh, come to think of it, now that you mentioned Yeah, they all lived in the Heights, right? Rita Crawford, Claire Nixon, and Virginia Peters. Right. What was the number of the apartment in each case, huh? Rita lived in 1A. Claire, 2B. Virginia, 3C. Don't ask me the why or where, or don't ask me the logic. Just play along crazy. You see what I mean. You'll see where he's going to strike next. I don't get what you mean. The next victim of the creeper lives in the Heights. She's a redhead. Her night lock's been tampered with. She's going to get hers today in her apartment number's 4D. Well, why are you staring at me? You don't like my arithmetic? Why, why are you staring? My wife's a redhead, too. We live on the heights. Our apartment numbers. Ah, oh, you're just a boozy reporter. And uh, your your apartment number? Four D, I told you. Four D, of course. I'll have it delivered. Apartment four D. I should have guessed it anyway. Why? <laughs> a face is a number. Believe me, since you've moved into the neighborhood, Mrs. Grant, for me it has a special number. Like a double dandy delicious green for these, you see? Go on, I'll stick to tell that to every customer. Female. <laughs> I'm a ladies' man, like the creep. Oh. oh, what did I say? What's going on in this block? Raw nerves, you can't joke. The creeper, the creeper, that's all I hear all day. Why, it's mass hysteria. There ain't no such an animal. You don't think so? Why, I assure you, Mrs. Grant, it's a fairy tale for circulation of the tabloids. I'll send you a prescription up to the board. No, I I'll just wait here for it. Well, it'll take some time. You should go right home and stay there if you're just getting over the flu. Now, believe me, I'll deliver it myself. It'll be a pleasure. No, no, I I'll wait. I, I may not go right back. I don't want to be there all alone, I'm afraid. Well, shoot yourself, Mrs. Grant. Why are you staring at me? I was admiring your lipstick. I've nothing like that in stock. It's a special lipstick. I used it when I was on the stage. Well, don't let the creeper go writing a note with your lipstick. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> For heaven's sake, stop me before I kill more. Oh. I cannot control oh. my... Oh. Wait, wait. What, that, that was a note I had reference to. It, it was a joke, that's all. Wait, Mrs. Grant, your prescription. <laughs> Mrs. Grant? Mrs. Grant! Oh, oh it's you, Mrs. Sibley. What's your hurry, dear? Go from murders in this neighborhood. Oh, yes. Isn't it terrible? You walking home? I guess so. I'll go with you. It's good we live in the same house. At least if I had a double lock. But the night one doesn't work. I can't get a locksmith. They're all so busy. Oh, no, don't you worry. We'll stay together this afternoon until our husbands come home. <laughs> Think of it. We've never visited, so we live right across the hall from each other. Isn't that just like a big city, for heaven's sake? Or would you rather I dropped in on you? Well, I, I don't... I'll make it yours, then. Isn't it horrible, the ghastly things they're saying? The theories. One doesn't know what to think next. You believe the latest? The latest? That maybe it's a woman, the creeper. A woman? Can you beat it? I can't imagine how in the world the police figure that, for heaven's sake. Can you? Oh, I don't know. 
I was just thinking of something my husband said. Though I can see we're a married woman now, if her husband was two-timing her stay, or perhaps only weak and no will of his own. And if the wife, say, was merely getting at those female homebreakers, well, I can understand that. Because you take my husband now. You've met Mr. Stone, haven't you? Well, Mrs. Grant, why on earth are you staring at me like that, for heaven's sake? I don't feel well. I, I must get home at once. I feel faint. But Mrs. Grant, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. I'll tell you. Oh. 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 I've listened to you, Tommy. Just spelling Charlie. He's fixing the fuse box. Help you with your packages? No, oh, thank you. Well, I don't mind a bit. You look out of breath. I can only... Where's... Where's Jimmy, the elevator boy? Uh, he stepped out for a few minutes. I'll take you up. But I... Well, he mightn't be back for another five, ten minutes. There's no point you're waiting for him. No, I, I suppose not. Apartment uh, 4D. Eh? Oh, yes. How did you know? Doesn't take long. Funny that both Charlie and Jimmy should go off, leaving you to run things alone. Particularly seeing you knew. Oh, I don't mind. The last place I worked, I was the only man. Where was that? 522 Smedley Avenue. 522 Smedley Avenue. Yes. Right next door to the apartment house where the creeper strangled Frida Corcus. Suppose you, uh, read about it. Yes. What's wrong? Why'd you stop? Wait. We seem to be stuck. Stop but... this elevator. Stop this elevator at once. There's no need to get excited, Mrs. Grant. Take it easy. You'll live long. <laughs> Can't figure what went wrong. <laughs> you don't fool me, not for a minute. Oh, scream if you don't. Oh, there we are. Well, Charlie must have cut off the car. Let me off. Let me off. Here we are. Want me to help you with your package? No, no. I must be going out of my mind. My key. Where's my key? Here it is. Oh, it's darn locked. Darn locked. Hello? Is the locksmith in yet? I want to know how soon I can get my locks in. Yes, of course I left my order. But he promised to fix it at once. No, I can't wait. I'm scared to death. Hello, baby. Don't tell a little fool. It's me. You want the whole house? To... That's better. What are you doing here, Tommy? I'm playing along crazy. What are you talking about? How did you get in here? <laughs> Alias Curly Valentine. Don't worry. You haven't a thing to be upset about now. I've come to protect you. Give me the phone. Hello? Never mind about the lock, thank you. Long time no see, Vicky. What do you want, Polly? Me? A headline. Your husband wants to. He wants I should keep an eye on you. What's that? Sure. You didn't think Steve and I were acquainted, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, from way back. Just met him at a bar. I don't believe you. What do you mean, keep an eye on me? Oh, just in case they're creepy. Oh. <laughs> you heard it, Carrie. You're mad. You've always been mad, Pearly Chase. Where is Steve? Why should he send you? Why should he think the creeper will come here? What are you doing here? I told you. Playing along crazy. Got a drink? You're drunk now. You're getting right out of here. You're nothing but a no-good rummy. And you're nothing but a no-good. You think so? When I took to drink, it was to forget you and you know it. Well, rum pot angel. Which means I haven't gotten over you. 
yet. Get out. You little two-time and redhead. Now you're all the same, you redhead. Why, you Haven't changed, have you? Even a red man can't do that to you. Ah, oh, don't play the game. My business is snoop, and I make a living at it. Between drinks. So your new models love thy neighbor, huh? Mr. Stone across the hall. You dirty thing, no fair. Sit down, darling. Just play along with me while I play along crazy. Sit down. That's it. Yeah, like we're expecting company. <laughs> I must be crazy doing this. Why wait here for the kids? Why not a hundred other streets, a thousand other apartments, a million other dames? Because I'm riding my hunt. Yeah, let's have some music. Don't just sit. Let's have some music. Turn on the radio. Let's dance. It's been a long time, baby. A long time. That's it. Now let's dance. Give me your arm. Let's dance. Yeah. Like old times. Around and around, like my brain. Why are you trembling? I still love you, you little slap me why. I love you, I love you, you love you, redhead. I could kill you and you deserve it. With the radio on, you could scream and no one would hear. I could put my hand on your throat like this and I could strangle you. <laughs> why are you crying? Stop it. I'm here to protect you. Stop crying. Cut it out. I say cut it out. I can't stand it. I never could. Okay, you want me to leave? All right, I will. It's your funeral. What am I saving you for anyway? Where's my hat? In a few minutes, there'll be a knock or a ring or the door will just open. And you'll be lying on the floor like the other three. Your face black, your eyes bulging. Goodbye, my worthless... Give my regards to the creeper. Oh, that look in his eyes. Like a madman. What if he comes back? He wants to kill me. He wants to kill me. Someone wants to kill me. Oh, I must lie down. My head. My sweating head. I'm white man. Mike, that's it. I like the other three. My face black. Like the other three. Like the other three any minute now. There'll be a knock for a ring. <laughs> yes? This is the doorman, Mrs. Grant. Yes? The druggist is here with the medicine. Shall I let him up? My medicine? Why, yes. No. No, don't let that man up. Want me to bring it up? No, 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 I'm, I'm perfectly all right. I don't need it. You hear? Don't you dare come up. Don't anyone. <laughs> Hello? I called just a few minutes ago. Please, please, I must have a change right away. My lock, my door lock, yes. This is Mrs. Grant. Yes, I do want it, of course. Anyone can get in, anyone. You'll come right away. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, but hurry, please. Hurry or I'll go out of my mind. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Like the other three. Strangle. Any minute now. A knock. Oh, really? Oh, oh who's there? It's me, dear, Mrs. Stone. What do you want? Well, I've been worried about you. Are you ill? No, I'm all right, Mrs. Stone. I'm feeling fine. Open up, dear. Don't you want me to keep you company? No, no thank you. I, I was just... Oh, stop it. Oh, do let me in, silly. No, no, go away. I, I'm going to sleep. Please go away. Do you hear me? Go away. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Vicky. Are you all right? Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve, I've been frantic. It's so good to hear 
your voice. Where are you? At headquarters. I'm coming right home. Sweetheart, is anything wrong? You sound no. kind of funny. No, not now. Not when I hear you speak. I don't know what came over me. All day I've, I've been imagining things so silly. My nerves... Forgive me for this morning, darling. I, I wasn't myself. My job had me down, but now everything's okay. Of course. Okay. Forgive me, Steve. I've been bad, bad, wicked. Oh, if you knew what I've gone through today. The most dreadful state. And then that... Steve, did you send someone here today? Early chase? Then you did. To keep you company. Isn't he still with you? I know. I just got rid of him. I wish you hadn't. He's an all right guy. Smart reporter. Lives in the neighborhood, too. Honey, it, it sounds cockeyed. I, I mean, Pearlie's theory, but I was a bit worried when I got to thinking, so... Vicky, don't let anyone in the house till I get home. I won't, Steve. Not anyone, do you hear? Not anyone. Locksmith. Oh, wait, Steve. Locksmith. Oh, wait, Steve. Oh, thank goodness at last. Now I can breathe easy. Just a minute, dear. Vicky. Hello. Hello, Vicky. Mr. Frank? Yes, Mr. Frank. Oh, thank goodness you've come. Please check in. It's the lock on this door that I... Oh, just a moment. My husband's on the phone. Steve? Hey, what happened? There was something else I wanted to tell you. It's all right. Everything's all right now, Steve. You needn't worry. Well, didn't I just hear you talking to someone? Was that someone at the door? It was no one, Steve. Just Mr. Frank, the locksmith, here to fix the lock. Oh, what a load off. The locksmith? Listen, Vicky, that's what I was going to tell you. What is it? The police are on a new trail. They think maybe a locksmith. Vicky, you listening? Maybe the creepers, the locks. Get him out, quick. What nice lipstick you use, Mrs. Grant. It's a lovely shade. Vicky, answer me, Vicky. Are you all right? Vicky. 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 Hurry. Catch me before I kill more. For heaven's sake. Hello. City desk? Yeah, Pearly Chase. Yeah, shut up and listen. On that creeper story I just gave you, add this stuff. The reward for his capture goes to the elevator boy. He heard Vicky Grant scream and called a cop. The creeper was shot running from the building. Yeah, ironical, wasn't it? The locksmith was the killer. The one man Vicky thought would protect him. What an ending to a lovely, lovely redhead. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on the creeper, which was chosen by guest expert Lawrence Blockman, whose latest thriller is Bengal Fire. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story in which three persons make a bet with death, with seven million dollars as the stake. Selected for your approval by the noted mystery writer, Miss Frances Crane. Until then, this is your host, John Dixon Carr, hoping you'll be with us next week at this time. Starting a week from tomorrow, on Sunday, July 31st, Murder by Experts will be heard every Sunday night at 10 o'clock. And starting next Saturday at this time, between half past 2 and 3 in the afternoon you'll hear a brand new show, The Damon Runyon Theater. Today's program came to you by transcription. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. In 25 seconds, you'll hear International Airport. You're invited to drop in on Scattergood Baines and the folks in Cold River this afternoon at half past five on WOR when Scattergood makes his regular visit. That's half past five over WOR. The temperature in New York City and vicinity... 84 degrees. WOR New York, 710 on your dial. 3 p.m. BULOVA, Bulova Watch Time. Where the Bulova Director, 3375.